First of all, there didn't seem to be any history uh, of Southern Alberta. Nobody seemed to know anything about it. And when you go into the records, they talk about the fact that uh, because the fur trade was in the northern part of the province and even the Arctic, uh, there was a lot more history being discovered in that area. You can find, for example, the early great pictures of the Arctic. Uh, way before you find pictures of southern Alberta. This particular part of southern Alberta um, was seen, seemed to be forgotten, maybe because there was no uh, need for gopher fur and uh, there wasn't great furs in this particular area. So the fur companies didn't come into this area. Also, they were probably, uh, uh, the, the Bloods and the Blackfoot didn't particularly want them around. This wasn't a very peaceful place for them to come in and uh, Nobody seemed to know the history. My uh, junior high school teacher, who was a great storyteller, uh, who Jim Cousins, who had written the first history of the Crow's Nest Pass, as a matter of fact, um, he was a, he got me interested in the history of this particular area, and I was uh, used to collect audio tapes of uh, the history when I could find them, and I found one of him discussing the fact that he had found this journal and so Cousins had this copy of, uh, of the Fiddler's Journal. It, it had never been published and I don't know whether he was supposed to let this out or not uh, but he, he had two copies. He kept one and he put the other one on the shelf of, of the uh, college or the university and he just hoped that people would look at it. This book is not here. I was given permission to look up Peter Fiddler's Journal in, uh, by the Hudson Bay Company. I copied it out, I found I'd copied it incompletely. Um, Hugh Dempsey had copied it completely, so I got the complete copy from him. I had two copies made. I, I bound them, I put one in the library, and I have one of my own, and uh, it's the description of this country by the first man who really spent the winter in, in this area. Uh, it's called um, A Journey from Buckingham House to the Rocky Mountains in 1792 and 93. He was more educated than most of the people that were working on the, on the, uh, on the bay. Uh, he was a map maker. Uh, the story is, I think, that he was sent down here to, to try to trade with the, with the natives down in this area. And then he actually met a group and ended up being in contact with the Kootenays that had come across the mountains to trade. On December the 30th then, he decided to go off with the Indians. He got to the place which he called Spitsyee, and uh, we call it Spitsy. He says, this is the place where an old man played a game called Poop and Dart. This is the way Fiddler wrote Napi. This is Napi, you know, they're the old man, you can recognize that. So this place, uh, Napi, uh, everything that we see around here, uh, you know, describes, uh, uh, you know, what Napi was all about. So the mountains behind us, they said this is where Napi slid down and, um, you know, created a lot of the uh, marks that we see on, our, you know, on the mountains behind us. In behind us, uh, we will be uh, taking the regular road up through there and seeing if we could get a little closer to uh, the marks that uh, Peter Fiddler actually witnessed. So those marks, uh, you know, when we're looking at, uh, you know, how he described them. He described them uh, when he asked the, uh, the people at the time uh, who built it. And they told him that it was, uh, it was a, another person by the name of Napi that came up from the south. Well, it's always nice uh, if we're able to find concrete evidence, um, you know, of people in the past having visited a certain area and uh, leaving something behind, you know, that would show that, uh, you know, where we come to uh, today is where they were in the past. So one of the things that uh, Peter Fiddler talks about in his journal is something called the, um, the Bowling Green. Now there, uh, if we look at this particular spot here, uh, it's actually, you know, quite uh, nice and uh, you know, back before it was disturbed a little too much. Uh, maybe the grass was a lot thicker and, uh, you know, much less traveled. But if we look in front of us here, uh, we could see in a 
sort of in a circle that we have here we have a pattern of rocks laid out in a pattern which is very similar to what uh, Peter Fiddler uh, draws and describes in his journal and uh, if we look around we could see certain rocks placed at uh, different intervals and if we do like locate uh, you know uh, patterns like what we see here uh, you know it provides us with uh, maybe some closure but you know a lot of times we there's always that uh, question you know is this what uh, we're looking for did we find it uh, or does it remain uh, some kind of a mystery in our distant past and they used landmarks like the devil's devil's head which is near Lake Minnewanka in Banff that was one and of course the chief mountain or as he called it the that was called the king and so on in the in the journal but it's chief mountain depends on which way you're looking at it but uh, it can be very majestic looking there are one or two things about uh, Fiddler's journey down here though that are, are worth noting one is um, in one of the in the journal here I think I I have it noted somewhere he gives descriptions of <coughs> He's the first man, white man, to see Chief Mountain. And he called it, uh, this is interesting, he said a mountain leaning away towards the east, and he, uh, he, he named it this way. And uh, Fiddler said, it is called by these people the king, or by our people, meaning the Crees, the governor of the mountain. He knew it was an important chief and he didn't know how to translate it. So in one language he called it the king and the other the governor of the mountains, the great chief. You see. And then the, the other thing that he did was describe the hunting of the buffalo. This isn't David Thompson remembering 10 years ago. This is an actual reported first-hand account of a buffalo hunt in our southern Alberta. When Peter Fiddler is brought down here, and I always say brought down here by the buffalo, you know, something that, uh, you know, they wanted him to see. So as he comes out, uh, he's met with a hunting party, uh, which uh, we have sort of concluded was very close to this area because he does talk about the buffalo jump off to the west. And he witnessed the uh, buffalo pound somewhere in this area uh, being used. And the only one that we've been able to find uh, is, was located in this area right here. Uh, so he describes how people uh, would uh, follow the buffalo and uh, once they were into the trap uh, the gates were closed and a uh, buffalo without a leader uh, had a very peculiar way of uh, simply running and um, you know they're they're not going to stop so the only way you could get him down and the way he describes it was they had these spears with these huge knives at the end and they would poke it through the rails and as the buffalo ran ran by uh, they would be opened up. So, uh, you know, even though he may have been, uh, you know, a little bit shocked by what he observed, it also provides us with a great deal of information, you know, of how uh, the surrounding landscape, uh, the time of the year, the seasonal routes, the migration, uh, you know, that uh, were being used by the Plains Prairie cultures uh, in order to survive uh, with the buffalo. Now, Lewis and Clark, journal, several ed editions of it, and one of them, it was uh, put out by um, an American historian who said that when Lewis and Clark were down, they were looking for a unique mountain peak which had been called the Tooth by Peter Fiddler, uh, a Hudson Bay Company man who claimed that he had been down there. And the footnote said, Hudson Bay Company people very often claimed that they were in places they had never been in order to claim more territory. Now the Hudson Bay people never claimed that they had been where they hadn't been because they had to go back there and trade very often and there was no use trying to guess something, you, you just had to have it. He was a, a, a great explorer of the Canadian West that uh, documented the, the landscape no one else had. And he, he was able to see it and write it down, which is now we have a record of it. That's just the journal exact, those are his words, as best has been copied. Uh, 
and it's the first written description of southern Alberta.